My name is Jérôme Pirat, and I've been investigating the criminal scene for 20 years. I retraced the smuggling routes in Morocco. In France, I followed all kinds of gangsters in Marseille and in the suburbs of Paris. Everyone had one thing in common. The same weapons. All these weapons come from the Balkans, especially from Serbia. Their traffic feeds into French crime. They were even used for the terrorist attacks at the Bataclan in Paris. I wanted to go back to the source and approach these traffickers who operate in the heart of Europe. They are one aspect of the Serbian Mafia. In Serbia, organized crime is all-powerful. In addition to arms trafficking, there is also drugs, racketeering, robberies. Here, gangsters have always had incestuous ties with the state. One man symbolizes this union, Arkan, mafioso and warlord in Bosnia and Croatia. Today, his heirs reign over the organized crime network. Welcome to Serbia, the black hole of Europe. One of my contacts in France put me in touch with an arms supplier in Belgrade. I have an appointment with one of his henchmen, who will lead me to his hideout. The man is suspicious. Since the attacks in Europe, arms trafficking is particularly targeted by Western and Serbian police who want to stop this sector at any cost. Yet, the traffic continues. Nine, nine millimeter? Yeah. Nine millimeter. 
You know, in Bosnia, they're like 200, 150. In Serbia, they're like already 500. When you get them across the border, it's 10 times the price. To the stock, yeah. But no, this is already pre ordered stuff. It's already sold. It's mostly for here, but then you know, people take it across. Usually France, Italy, Germany. You sell a lot to friends of weapons? Yeah, a lot. Of, we have some friends over there, you know. When I was in jail with him, and I met him, we have contact over there. So, you know, he's our main guy over there. I don't want to say no names, you know, but he was in jail here, and you know, he's a good guy. We do a lot of business together. He sells a lot of guns, but uh, you, you probably want to know how it goes across to Europe. Yes. Well, a lot of uh, our guns, they get uh, transported by Turkish trucks, you know, Turks. Uh, that's the most easiest way, you know, the common way. So, you know, sometimes they peck through the woods, you know, but now because of the border control, because of migrants, you know, it gets harder and harder, you know. It was going through Hungary and now it goes through Croatia, you know. It's easier that way. Croatia? Yeah, the Croatia and then to Europe, you know, Croatia is Europe now. Uh, where does it come from, this kind of uh, stuff? Yeah, most uh, guns come from Bosnia. There's a lot of guns there because of the war, you know. A lot of stockpile guns from all the wars we had here in former Yugoslavia. In Serbia, you have a lot of customers. There is a big uh, criminal world. Yeah, there's a big criminal world. Yeah. Hooligans, criminal organizations, clans, you know. A lot of killing, a lot of uh, violence. There's a lot of violence here, all the time, everywhere in Serbia, Belgrade especially, you know, big city, two million people. There's always going to be crime in Serbia, but we're like that. Arms trafficking is in fact only the underground aspect of organized crime. Serbia is also one of the hubs of cocaine coming from South America, which floods Europe. Large-scale drug trafficking, but also jewelry robbery and a series of burglaries. How did this small country of 7 million inhabitants make its mark on the European criminal scene? In Belgrade, I learned that organized crime today is in the hands of hooligan gangs. In the city, they mark their territory by the colors of their team. The most famous is the Red Star. Soccer stadiums have become the gangsters' headquarters. It is the eve of the match between the Red Star and the other big club in Belgrade, the Partisan. This is the tensest match in Europe, a good way to connect with this world. To attend it, I have an appointment with two fervent fans, two thugs operating in Europe. Santé, Jivali, Jivali. Opa, Sandoria. Les Serbes, ils aiment bien le foot, mais on a l'impression que les voyous, ils aiment particulièrement le football en Serbie. Demain, vous allez au match, euh, au derby. <rire> C'est chaud le match demain. Mita and Sasha are specialists in burgling wealthy villas in Western Europe. Proud of their exploits and a little drunk, they agree to be filmed with their faces uncovered. You work always together? Are you associated? Yes. How long have you worked together? One year. That's not the news on the television. Okay. Okay. You kill people, you kill people. That means you go out, il y a beaucoup de garçons comme vous euh, au stade demain qui font la même profession. Oh, 
Bon, j'ai choisi mon, mon uniforme pour ce soir. Là, ça va être chaud. J'y connais rien au foot. Alors, au moins que j'ai le t-shirt pour me fondre dans la foule, là, et, euh, et pas avoir l'air euh, trois côtés de la plaque dans la tribune des supporters. C'est la tribune nord, ils sont super chauds. Voilà, c'est bon, avec ça je pense que je vais passer inaperçu. Faut que je le mette là-dessous le temps qu'on arrive au stade parce que si je croise les supporters des partisans, il paraît que ce sera bon du tout d'avoir ça. Violence between fans is very frequent. In September 2009, partisan hooligans even killed a French supporter in the streets of Belgrade. <laughs> Mita, the burglar, goes with me to the match along with some big friends. Bon bah là ça y est on y est. On arrive au stade, on va rentrer. Je suis avec euh, une bonne équipe là je crois pour euh, affronter le, le match. Les trois camarades. Il y a déjà eu des bagarres un peu partout. Les flics anti émeute euh, euh, en nombre. Toi toi. Oh, on sent que l'ambiance est un peu tendue. Super. Je suis pas venu avec les plus maigres du stade. Normalement, on devrait s'en sortir pas trop mal. Let's head to the northern stand, the most intense part of the stadium. This is where the extreme Red Star fans meet. They are called the Dalia, the brave ones in Serbian. They carry portraits of nationalists and in their songs with warlike accents, they compare themselves to an army ready to fight. In the opposite stand, the grobery of the partisan, grave diggers. The hostile brothers of Belgrade stand face to face. 1-0. Tonight, the partisan win. Attending this match is my ticket into the crime network. A very rare occurrence, these mafia hooligans invite me to one of their homes, an anonymous house in the northern suburbs of the city. Les groupes de supporters criminels, comme vous, ils font quoi comme activité euh, illégale C'est quoi votre spécialité Pourquoi il n'y a plus de raquettes Et vous vendez quoi comme euh, drogue Sve. Chiche, cocaïne, everything. Oui, c'est vrai. Les gens ont pratiquement un monopole sur le traitement des narcotiques. Et c'est juste dans les dernières 20 ans, j'ai pu faire des choses comme ça. Les gangs de, de supporters, ils ont quelle place aujourd'hui dans le, dans le milieu serbe, dans la, dans la criminalité de Belgrade Ils ont des navires qui groupent pourquoi il y a autant de voyous au stade? 
nejaký družov, nejaký odpustný, to sú tí pohľadných bezdejných nejakých skupov a ja v manifestácii, ja mám skupov a my týchto političí, ale my to radíme u civil, znači da sa neznam, da sme my tu, ne radíme, ne znam si niko, ne znam si koja nevieč, ko nie, ale sme tu, ukoliko neko hoče da pravi nerad ili skamira opet proti vlasti, my tu nemamo. In May 2017, during the inauguration of the new Serbian president, Aleksandar Vucic, protesters and journalists are assaulted and evacuated with military aid by men in plain clothes. The attackers are then identified as fans linked to organized crime. The hooligans' role is exposed. If I understand correctly, the criminals are interested to join the supporters because the state does affairs with the supporters. Tako je, to je 100%, pa 100%, it's like this, it is, to je najsigurniji način da budete abolirani od nečeg što radite loše, nešto što radite loše. The Serbian state is the guardian angel of the stadium's criminals, and not only for the Red Star Delias. I learn in the press that thugs who are fans of the partisan practice shooting in police barracks. They practice killing in barracks. In this scandalous photo, we see them with the super cop from special forces during a match. Inappropriate friendship or an organized system? After long negotiations, partisan fans agree to meet me. These men are formidable cocaine traffickers. Koja se promenila u ovoj Srbiji? Posle Slobodna Miloševića, uvijek su bili tu navijači, koji su zaštitili i u slučaju bilo kojih problema državnih grupe navijača i navijači staju na stranu države i onda svi protesti koji se rade, rade se sa strane navijača. Znači, bilo šta da treba zaštiti ili za bilo šta, tu su navijači koji će da podupru vlast. Ima potpunu kontrolu, znači oni Kontrolu imaju sigurno nad svim navijačima jer su u sprezi, vezani su jedni za druge, jedni bez drugih ne mogu. Znači jedni drugi štite. Dođe li do problema, izađu navijači. Dođe li do problema sa navijačem, izađe vlast. Tako da su uvek u sprezi, zato i dolazi do toga. Dok, u fet, vi formi jednu bonu asociju, čakaj u servisu al otru. Crna gora. Znači to je pod zapodržavanje vlasti. I onda im... Bukvalno kada kažeš gleda kroz prste. Tako je i u sustavu takođe, i ako dođe do velikih problema, isto tako će država da stane na stranu navijača i da dođe sa minimalim nekih kaznama. These dangerous links between the state and organized crime are unique in Europe. Here, gangsters provide services to power in return for virtual impunity. And it's been going on for decades ever since communist Yugoslavia. One man embodies this unbelievable combination of activities. Arkan, the greatest Serbian criminal. He's a mafioso, the leader of the Red Star fans and a warlord. He was the boss. Everybody was scared of him. The new generation of the criminals are now all successful of Arkan. They all look up to him. Arkan je moj lično idol, on je bio mnogo, mnogo iznad svih navijača zvezde po nekoj organizaciji, jednostavno je bio rođen i vođe i karizmatičan čovjek. Serbian crime is inseparable from the history of the country, and to understand it we need to go back 30 years. Through Arkan's story, I will learn how the Serbian gangsters became so powerful that they believed themselves to be untouchable. Arkan's real name is Zeliško Raznatović. The son of an Air Force officer, he is sentenced at the age of 17 for robbery and burglary. At the age of 20 in the early 1970s, he goes to Western Europe to practice his talents as a crook. 
He robs banks and jewelry stores and quickly becomes a figure of the Yugoslavian crime network. Convicted many times in the West, he always finds refuge in Belgrade. Here, the authorities leave him alone, and for good reason. He also works for the regime's secret police. I have an appointment with a shady man, a former senior security official. Arkan worked for him. Ja sam možda spane 15 godina sa radio u jugoslovenskoj tajnoj policiji kada je bila celokupna Jugoslavija. Boza Spazic recruited killers in the criminal community on behalf of the communist regime. The mission of these thugs, like Arkan, was to eliminate political opponents who sought refuge in the West. For having ordered these murders, Boza Spazic was sentenced to life in prison absentia by the Belgian courts in 2016. A mi ne šaljemo naše operatice, dakle ne idem ja da ubijem ili da preduzem neku ofanzivnu akciju, da bacim neku bombu, da zapalim neku zgradu, nego mi za te operacije angažujemo u to vreme Jugoslovensko kriminalno pozemlje, dakle ljude iz pozemlja. Kako vam ih izgledate ti kriminali? Sa kaj kriterije vam ih izgledate? Mora je da bude ludo hrabro. Hrabar, dakle to je prvi kriterij mjeste da ja znam da on može da uđe u neku banku u Francuskoj, u Italiji, da je opljačka i da pobedne. I treće, morao je da zna da rukuje sredstvima. Nismo mi samo oružijem vršili eliminaciju terorista, dakle pištoljima, ne znam, mašinskim puškama ili hekljerima. Mi smo ponekad palili kafane, palili neke prostorije u kojima se skupljala teroristi ili im palili automobile. Dakle, morao je da zna te neke stvari. Ako nije znao, ja sam ga vodio na jednu kratku obuku tu u okolini Beograda. Ali su oni svakom slučaju bili bolji od nas u tom pogledu. Pretpostavljam čak da su bili i hrabriji, jer njemu zatvor ništa nije značio ako ga ukvate. On je već bio u zatvoru. At the time, Arkan the robber is protected by state security. He is provided with a new passport and a new identity for each mission. The man is elusive and even when he is arrested, he always manages to escape. Quel souvenir vous gardez du de Arkan à cette époque-là. Professionnellement, on est bien aimé. Car au professionnel, ça commande des dates, qu'on ne peut pas le faire. Mais Sam Arkan, après ce que a fait, en 1983, quand la police a commencé à travailler avec lui, il a fait quelques choses qui ne nous ont pas plu. Il est allé à Beograd, il a poussé les policiers, etc. Mais nous n'avons jamais oublié ono što je uradio za državu. Il avait quoi comme spécialité Arkan? Il était chargé de quelle mission exactement? On je bio samo za za eliminacije. Dakle, selekcija je bila da oni jesu bili vrhunski. Oni su praktično bili vođe vođe nekih klanova, a to su opšte poznate zvezde jugoslovenskog kriminalnog pozemlja i tokom vremena o njima je napravljen ovde jedan mit. Budite uvereni da nisu sarađivali sa Jugoslovenskom tajnom policijom, nikad se ne bi znalo ni ko je Arka, ni ko je Giška, ni ko su drugi koji se spominju u tim razno raznim drugim operacijama. Alors, est-ce qu'on peut dire que c'est l'État Jugoslav qui a créé certains de ces criminels? No. Ne postoje mogućnost da smo mi stvorili kriminalce. Mi smo iskoristili kriminalce. Dakle, oni su bili ljudi koji su se već bavili kriminalcem, Ni jednog kriminalca Jugoslovenska tajna policija nije izmislila. Ona je umela samo najveštije na svetu da ih iskoristi. In 15 years Boza Spazić issued more than 600 passports to criminals, an unprecedented collaboration between the services of a state and the underground crime network, and it does not stop there. After serving as killers, the thugs will come to the rescue of the communist regime and its newly elected president, Slobodan Milosevic. In 1990, the country falters. The Soviet bloc has just collapsed and President Milosevic is struggling to contain popular discontent. Mobsters take charge and are tasked with taming the turbulent youth of the stadiums. They become their leaders. Arkan reigns over the famous Red Star Delia. Organized crime, soccer fans, and nationalism are one and the same. 
one man lived through this key moment. Milos, also known as the Doctor, is a figure of the Belgrade criminal underworld. Armed robber, owner of nightclubs, he was also a Red Star fan during Arkan's time. On je bio takav kakav jeste, sujeta Milošević i ovo. I onda je ovaj Arkan preuzeo ovaj... Pourquoi Milošević? Pourquoi via la sécurité d'État il voulait contrôler les supporters du Red Star? Pa zato što što je 80% ovaj tih navijača zvezde, Delija i pa barem 50-60% ovaj navijača Partizana, ovaj Grobara, Bilo pristalice, bili su pristalice Vuka Drašković, koji je u to vreme bio druga, druga ovaj, politička snaga u Srbiji i najveća opasnost po Milošević. Šta je sever, kako se navija, šta smija se peva, šta ne smija se peva, dokle koji iz te navijačke hirarkije može da ide, dokle ne može. Znači, sklanju ljude sa tribina koji su bili protiv Miloševića, koji su bili nepodobni. I trebalo je to, i to su bili 90% mako mladi ljudi, puni energije, puni elana, neiskusni, kojima je trebao vođe. I found one of Arkan's fellow travelers. Voya met me at a posh hotel in Belgrade. He is now a smart businessman in charge of a major construction company. He knows the crime network very well, and for good reason. At 18, he was a young thug. Ja bih rekao da sam bio malo više neslašan, što više. E sad, ali to pravda ili nije, ali sitnih da. A nije to bilo zanimanje kao zanimanje to. Znači, da li će to biti pljačka, da li će biti razbojništvo, stvar okruženja. At the time, he was fascinated by the success of Arkan, whom he met during a soccer match. Vremena u kojem sam ja rastao i u kojem sam tražio svoje dele i dole, to su bili vođe navijača, to su bili ti ljudi koji su na taj način sticali svoju slavu, svoje ime, novac. Oni za mene tada nisu bili ni kriminalci, ni gansteri, nego neko ko se bori za mnogo više. Arkana sam poznao, znao, znao sam ko je Arkan, pa viđao sam ga na stadionu, on je bio jedan od vođa navijača, sam on je nosio brioni odela kad pola Evrope mislilo da je to ostrovo samo u Jadranu. On je čovjek koji je govorio pet svetskih jezika, on je čovjek čije ime nisi morao dva puta da pomeneš bilo gde u Evropi, da li je to Pariz, da li je to Amsterdam, da li je to Rim. Ne bih rekao da su gansteri bili popularni, bio je popularan taj način života, da se imam mnogo više nego što je sistem dozvoljavao. Način koji ti dozvoljava da voziš najskuplja kola, da nosiš najbolje satove, da budeš sa, u najskupnim hotelima sa najlepšim ženama, da nemaš potrebu da obaveštavaš i da se javljaš bilo kome, da si ograničen u bilo kom pogledu. Znači, način koji ti dozvoljava maksimalnu slobodu. Arkan becomes an idol for the Serbian youth. Emilosevic is going to put his charisma to use as nationalist tensions are exacerbated in the Yugoslavian republics. The hatred that has been brewing for years between Serbians and Croatians threatens to break out at any moment. And as it so happens, it's during a soccer match that everything will change dramatically. The first sparks of war. On May the 13th, 1990 in Zagreb, the Croatian team Dynamo hosts Red Star of Belgrade. 3,000 Serbian fans travel to support their champions. Here we see Arkan at the edge of the field in a bright suit and sunglasses. Violence erupts right from the kickoff. The Serbians rush upon the Croatians. There is a general brawl. The result, more than 200 wounded. A few months later, in 1991, Yugoslavia explodes. Croatia proclaims its independence. To protect the Serbian minority in Croatia, Slobodan Milosevic sends his army there and goes even further. He encourages the formation of paramilitary groups often made up of criminals. The Belgrade thugs changed their status. 
they become militia leaders. Arkan becomes the most powerful of them, the Serbian guard of the volunteers, nicknamed the Tigers. We, police, Serbian Dobrovolnički Garde, you the Serbian narodu u ovom vremenu. Vama je čas da ste tu u ovom vremenu da branite naš srpski narod. Normalno vođe navijača su ljudi bili koji su imali ogroman autoritet među ostalim navijačima i onda je bilo normalno da ti ljudi i, i krenu u osnivanje takvih vojnih formacija. Ma sećam se nije, a, ja sam otišao kao i mnogi drugi kao dobrovoljac, sam sam se prijavio. Preko puta Marakana se nalazi komadantova kuća. U, toj, u jednom delu te kuće bio je štab gdje su ljudi mogli da dođu da se prijave i odatle posle uzimanja imena prezimena se odlazilo za Erdut u, u centar za obuku. Meni su pripali borbeni vodovi. Imao sam to zadovoljstvo da, znači, da učestvujem u borbenim direktnim akcijama. Kako je ideja da ćeš učiniti i suporteri Red Star? Prvo nije Arkan odabrao uh, stadion i navijače, već je država odabrala Arkana da preko njega kontroliše navijače. C'est en gros la sécurité d'État avec qui il travaillait, qui lui a dit, bah, puisque tu contrôles les supporters, recrute parmi eux. Pas tout à quoi il y a des noms moglés d'avoué. Il est même bien libre, la déjà. Ne peut-être que vous, Arkano, est pas là, n'a pas mis dans la prise son voice. Ne peut. Nous avons eu une grande nation, une grande nation de sécurité. Arkano, division. Arkano, division. The Serb Volunteer Guard is a real small army. There will be a thousand Tigers during its six years of existence. Today, the former general of the Tigers is a political figure in Serbia. He has been a member of parliament for many years. Bonjour. Bonjour. This high-level karate fighter led Arkan's troops during the war. He hosts me at his house, a true museum to the glory of the Tigers and their commander. I have more than 30 pictures of the Arkan. Because he was my cousin, on je meni krstio četvoro dece, a ja sam njega venčao. Njegovo ime je Željko, kao što je ime i Arkanovo, Željko Ražnatović. Ovo je fotografija gdje smo se slikali pred polazak u jednu akciju. Ovo je moj komand Arkan, ovo sam ja. Ki je donio li surnom de Tigra, pišto je pa vodro nom oficijel? A, to je bilo vrlo čudno. Kao što vidite na ovoj slici, ovdje je komandant Arkan sa malim tigrom. Tigar e, je poklon od našeg prijatelja koji je bio direktor e, Beogradskog zološkog vrta. Taj tigar je bio stalno sa nama, on je odrastao sa nama, u isto vreme opasna kao i Arkanovi tigrovi. Ovo je zastava Srpske dobrojačke garde, ratna zastava. Ratna zastava. Ovo je Radovan Karadžić. Ja njega poštujem jer je on samo branio srpski narod. Radovan Karadžić was sentenced to 40 years in prison for genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes. Ovo je slika super tigrova. To je naša elitna jedinica super tigrovi. Momci koji zaista predstavljaju pravu srpsku dobrodošu gardu. Oni su probijali neprijateljske linije. On a dit qu'il y avait beaucoup de criminels à la garde. Est-ce qu'il y avait beaucoup d'anciens voyous, d'anciens truands Tu vous dites vous. Tu vous dites vous, étranger nominari. Tu vous dites. Nico ne dit que dans la garde, par exemple, il y a eu 31 borsa qui ont été morts. Il y a 11 d'entre eux qui ont fait la To Nico ne dit To Nico ne dit pas. Ils disent, ah, criminels, arcanovi criminels. Oui, c'est plus facile. Mais vous croyez ou ne croyez pas, je ne suis pas brigade. Je ne veux pas. About your opinion about, I don't care. It's your opinion and your colleague from the West. The question is taboo. 
However, at that time, each camp in the former Yugoslavia did create its own militias, mostly made up of criminals. Why did the Serbian, Croatian and Bosnian leaders use thugs like Arkan to wage war? How far did they go? On Happy TV, a private channel, witnesses talk about the behind the scenes of political life. Its star journalist, Maric, has made a name for himself by his revelations about the links between the criminal world and the state, and in particular about the role of these paramilitary groups. Ils ont fait quoi dans ces en Bosnie, en Croatie Qu'est-ce qu'on leur demandait de faire Oni su radili prljave poslove, ono što re, oni su radili ono što regularna jugoslovenska narodna armija i što nije ni jugoslovenska vojska Miloševića, ni hrvatska vojska Tuđmana, ni e, muslimanska vojska Izetbegovića, ono što je po Ženevskoj konvenciji ratni zločin. Oni su to izbjegavali da ratni zločin ne padne na državu. Ona je mogla da kaže, mi nemamo ništa s tim, to su radili kriminalci koji su pljačkali banke, ubijali ljude, država s tim nema nikakve veze. Uličari koji su po Evropi bili spremni na sve, oni samo došli tu da postanu narodni heroji. In 1991, during the Serbian siege of the town of Vukova in Croatia, Arkan's Tigers were sent to the front line. Their mission? To conquer what they considered Serbian territories and to protect their people. Blitz napadom! Ovo je pretežno srpsko mesto, mešano. U podrumima izviđači su nam javili noćas. U podrumima su Srbi. A... Na prizemlju su ustaše. Znači, ubićeš brata Srbina, moraš da paziš. Molim vas, kad ulazite u kuće, svi vođama grupa pričamo ovo isto. Kad ulazite u kuće, kad pravite čišćenje, zoljama skidajte prizemlje. Je li jasno? Jasno. Prizemlje skidajte, podrum ostavite neoštećen. Podrum mora da se osvaja kuća po kuće i podrum po podrum. The Battle of Vukovar will result in several hundred deaths, one of the first bloody episodes of the war in former Yugoslavia. In the following months, the conflict reaches Bosnia, where the militias of each camp will be unleashed. Four million displaced people, 150,000 dead. It's the most deadly European conflict since the Second World War. While Arkan is named by the West as one of the worst war criminals, neither he nor any of his men are pursued by Serbian justice. The state protects its people. In 1995, at the end of the war, he was welcomed as a hero in Belgrade. He founds his own political party and he marries Checha, the Madonna of the Balkans. Their marriage is a big event. It is broadcast live on television. He then bought an obscure Belgrade soccer club, the Ubalic. Two years later, the team wins the Serbian Cup. Having become a legend, Arkan is now a respectable businessman and appears richer than ever. Where does this money come from when Serbia lost the war? The answer will be given to me by one of Arkan's former partners. I meet him in the casino he runs in downtown Belgrade. Havana is open day and night. Soleil is a former judo and sumo champion. He collaborated with Arkan in his first big gambling deals. He saw how Mafia leaders took advantage of the war to get rich. C'est la guerre qui a rendu les criminels plus puissants. Est-ce que vous pouvez expliquer en quoi ils ont fait la fortune concrètement Comment ça s'est passé Pa business je uglavnom bio ko šverca, znači akcizne robe, ne znam, cigare, kafa, ne znam, brašno u nekim trenucima, gorivo. Sva ta roba koja je akcizna i koja se najpreprode. Normalno da 
što nisu mogli sami da iz posreduje država. To su radili kriminalci, znači imali su svoje veze van države, svoje prijatelje, drugove i onda ulačili robu. Da li je, uglavnom je to bila akcizna roba. The UN imposed a three-year embargo on Serbia during the war. The black market explodes. Mafiosi like Arkan become more powerful than ever. Svoju razliku u ceni, tako da su dolazili do ozbiljne količine para i moći. Tako da su oni u celoj situaciji odskočili. I od cele te moći i para otišli u regularne poslije. kao što je gradnja, kupovina firmi, poljoprivrednog dobra, zemlješta i druge stvari. Znači, postali su moćni, počeli su da kupuju političke partije, da zapošljavaju mnogo ljudi i jednostavno su preskočili jednu veliku stepenicu i postali, znači, do jučerašnjih gospodari koji su kriminalci polagali račune, sad su kriminalci postali gospodari. So, Arkan is the most influential man in Serbia. He considers himself untouchable, even if international justice begins to take an interest in him. Indeed, the International Criminal Tribunal in The Hague accuses him of war crimes and crimes against humanity. I'm not afraid, you know, during the war, I never uh, went down on the ground. I was always standing on my legs, so the bullet could hit me if God said so. I'm not afraid of dying. On the 20th of January 2000, Arkan is buried in Belgrade with honors worthy of a head of state. A few days earlier, he was shot dead as he was leaving a luxury hotel with his wife and bodyguard. The assassination comes out of the blue. The identity of the person who ordered the assassination will never be officially known, but some have an idea. I have an appointment with Mile Novakovic, who at that time was the head of the Serbian Judicial Police. According to him, Arkan had become too embarrassing for the state and the criminal network. Arkan was killed when he was in the Arkan? imao toliko moć da svako se bavio nekim ozbiljnim kriminalom na ovom prostoru, morao je da daje reket njemu. I to je očigledno došlo do grla mnogim. Osilio se, besneo, verovatno je došlo i do... Više nije mogla ni bezbednost da ga prati i da ga drži kako ga je ranije držala. I onda su očigledno uz pomoć možda i neki bezbednosti službi organizovala se grupa koja je odlučila da da ubije Arkana. Behind the assassination of Arkan, the shadow of Slobodan Milosevic looms. At the time, the Serbian president has just been indicted for crimes against humanity by the International Criminal Court. Pa govorio se da je Arkan izgubio Miloševićevo poverenje, da ne pristaje da Milošević svu krivicu za ratove svali na njega. Govorilo se da je on imao neke tajne kontakte sa Haškim tribunalom, da je ponudio neke svoje usluge, da je dao neko svjedočanstvo i da je zbog toga Milošević odlučio da Arkan bude ubijen. Govorilo se da iza toga stoje i razni biznismeni iz Beograda koji više nisu mogli da trpe da ih Arkan reketira i da su praktično oni finansirali ubistvo Arkana koje je bilo po dogovoru sa Miloševićem i tajnim službama i lično sa Milošević. Jer Arkana da ubije neko bez dozove Miloševića u to vreme bilo je nemo. The official investigation has never been able to prove the state's involvement in the assassination of this mafia warlord. Arkan is dead and his widow is an icon. Today, Checha, far from being rejected or forgotten, is the most popular singer from the Balkans. 
Every year, she gives a single concert in Serbia. This time, it is in the city of Novi Sad, an hour away from Belgrade. Checha inherited her husband's fortune and part of his business. Suspected of being linked to the mafia, she spent a few months in jail before finally being cleared. Nobody touches an icon. Today, she's wary of Western journalists. In front of the cameras, she repeats the same spiel, that of the weeping widow. The death of Arkan has not really changed the situation in Serbia. One man tried to fight organized crime, Zoran Djindjic, who was elected prime minister after the fall of Milosevic in the early 2000s. He promised to clean things up, to rid the country of the mafia. We are aware of that and we are working on that, to open the police with the technique, to change the criminal law, to not be our law judge, the most humanist in the world, to be every criminal, a 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 criminal, but in Serbia, nobody upsets the mafia and changes the rules of the game. A few months later, the so-called Kennedy of the Balkans was shot by a sniper, never seen before in Europe. The police tracked down the one who gave the order, a former officer in the Tigers. Legia, the legionary. This was Arkan's successor. He had helped Djindjic take power and he felt betrayed. Džinđić nije imao svoju vojsku, nije imao svoju policiju i on se opredelio na jedan deo organizovane grupe kriminalaca da ih Legija je obavio razgovor sa Džinđićem i obećao ako 5. oktobera narod odluči da smeni Miloševića, on se neće mešati. Posle 5. oktobera, kada je smenjen Milošević, sebe smatrali da imaju ogromnu zaslugu i da to na neki način kriminalno mora da im se vrati, mora da im se plati. Zemunski klan Džinđića u glavama je bilo to, oni su nas izdali, mi smo 
došla je odluka da Đinčića treba ubiti. Lidja will be sentenced to 40 years in prison for this assassination. Today the state wants to be seen as blameless and the country is a candidate for entry into the European Union. But the collaboration between Serbian organized crime and the state remains deeply fixed. And this collaboration is far from gone. In soccer stadiums and elsewhere, in spite of Arkan's death, criminal money allegedly continues to supply a good part of the country's economy and to corrupt the state. Imaju ljude ovaj, u ministarstvima koji mislijaju građevinske dozvole, naravno, uz adekvatne ovaj, nadoknade po katastrima, po, po, po svaka opština ima svog čoveka zadužena za to. Sve se to plaća i kreće se u gradnju korupcije na visokom nivou, počeo od vrha do dola. Vrha države preko administracije u zavodu, sudovima, policija, bilo koja institucija. Znači sve je na prodaju i sve je kupljivo. I sve te što su bile da ne kažem relativno crne pare, uspeli su da operu kroz regularne poslove. Kjeli su li lijene od le monde kriminel i la politiku kao uđordovi? Pa veze su danas velike s tim da je politika samo jedan veći kriminal. Interes je sad u prvom planu. Tako su napravili političari, tako su, na primjer, ovaj, to je isto ona priča kao u kumu kad kaže gospođa svom mužu. Više ga je volao dok je bio kriminalac, kaže sad kad je odjednom postao političar, sad tek shvati koliko mu ne može niko ništa. Every year on January 15th, the day of Arkan's death, those faithful to him gather around his grave to pay him homage. In the front row, his widow, Checha. The one who is now called the mother of Serbia has come with their two children. Political figures, businessmen, former tigers, fans, thugs, they are all here. srpskom narodu. Reputacija srpske družbe garde je ogromna. Mi smo heroji. Ljudi uh, nas uh, nazivaju arkanovcima, znači Poznajemo, družimo, održavamo kontakte i pomažemo jedni drugim. Imamo poseban odnos jedni prema drugima u odnosu na sve druge poznanike, prijatelje i rođe. A fraternity united by the bonds of blood, war and crime and which has not revealed all its secrets. Tu veux l'une qu'est-ce qu'ils font après à tous? Pas d'âge. After having opened the door to me, the Serbian Crime Network now wishes to close it. <laughs>